if you're in your late 60s or 70s, you're going to know what Lara's theme is. The music from the 1965 film Dr. Zhivago with uh, Omar Sharif and Julie Christie. One of the best films ever made and set in Russia. Dr. Zhivago, the movie, was based on the book by Boris Pasternak, published in 1957. Look, this isn't a political channel. It's about books. And I'm talking today about a recent literary controversy. But it does, unfortunately, have Russia and the Ukraine in it, front and centre. But I want to say again, I'm neutral. Stop the war. I don't have a side in this. And this episode is about books and not about politics. So what am I going to talk about? I'm going to talk about a lady, an author called Elizabeth Gilbert. She's an American, a professional journalist, a writer, very successful. And her major success was a book called Eat, Pray and Love. She came as a tourist to Asia after a divorce, I think. OK, I've lived here for 30 years. She came and sampled the place. She went to uh, India. She went, I think, to Indonesia, to Bali. And she wrote a book about it. Cool. And she sold 12 million copies. And fantastic. Good for her. Recently, she was going to publish her latest book. Her new book was called The Snow Forest, and it was supposed to launch in uh, February next year. And so there was publicity on Goodreads about advanced copies and, you know, pre-purchases and so forth. I suppose the book was written about two years ago, and it has zero to do with politics. It's about isolation and it's based on a real story about a family called the Lykovs who spent more than 40 years in the Russian wilderness in more or less complete isolation. So it's a book that she says was inspired by COVID and by the lockdowns and people being isolated. Nothing to do with politics. She's just withdrawn the book. Why? because it was set in Russia and Ukrainian readers complained about it. And her publisher, Penguin Random House, went along with her request. Apparently it was her request, not their request. She says, and I hear I'm quoting her, I have received an enormous, massive outpouring of reactions and responses from my Ukrainian readers expressing anger, sorrow, disappointment, and pain about the fact that I would choose to release a book into the world right now. Any book, no matter what the subject is, that is set in Russia. Okay. Apparently, one of the people wrote, quote, while Ukrainians are dying from Russian terrorists, famous authors are writing books about them and romanticizing these bastards. There were, at the time I'm doing this, 532 such reviews, I suppose, let's say, just under 600 reviews. And because of those reviews, she withdrew the book. Now, there's a few things I'd like to say about this, and it's a bit of a rant. She suffers from hubris. She wrote a book about Russia, which is the source of some of the world's greatest literature. And I'm putting up a list on the slide of the 10 greatest Russian novels. You start with War and Peace. You have Crime and Punishment. You have Anna Karenina. One title after another, and of course, number five on the list is Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak. 
all of this is great literature that came out of Russia. OK, she chose to write a book about Russia. She's not Russian, but whatever. Fair enough. I write books about places that I don't know. I think there's an irony as well in all of this, that the books I've talked about, Crime and Punishment, Fyodor Dostoevsky, are anti-government. The writers, the Russian writers that I've mentioned were people who were against the regime, they were against the Tsar, they were against Stalin, the general secretary, they were against the regime, and most of them had their books banned in Russia. If I remember correctly, Dr. Zhivago was published first outside Russia because it was banned in Russia. So there's an irony, isn't there, that the Russian literature is anti-government, and yet this lady is in some sense overly sensitive. These guys went ahead and they published their books irrespective of what anybody thought about them. So I think she's failed. I think she tries to stand with these giants of literature, but instead she bows to a few sensitive souls. And I know why they're sensitive. I get why they're sensitive. But they're sensitive and they feel that anything Russia should be banned. So what's the bottom line here? The bottom line for me is this. I think she, I think Elizabeth Gilbert illustrates the difference between somebody who writes commercially, she does it as a living, she does it for the money, and she's conscious that she has to tick all the boxes and make sure she doesn't upset anybody at all. And she's supported in that by her traditional publishing houses. They're all watching the market. They're all watching just in case they offend somebody who's woke. And then there are those of us, and I think we're in the majority, who write because we have something to say. And we will say it. And I will say it in my books, no matter what sensitive souls I might offend. That's all I have to say today. Have a great day.